Wow, everybody, I hope you enjoy that. Let's, uh, let's give a special thank you to the Way to Experience, the Way to Experience. Let's hear it for them, guys. Come on. Thank you guys so much for, uh, for sharing your music and your talents with us and helping us kick off uh, National Child Abuse Prevention Month and the Realities Rooftop Raise. It means so much to us. Can't thank you enough for doing that. Folks, uh, if you're questioning as you're viewing this uh, at home, if this is truly a live event, I think you can enjoy all the fun things that are happening with, uh, with the live experiences here. Obviously, we have people setting up, tearing down, coming in, coming out, but that's, that's what we get to do fun here about the Realities Rooftop Raise is we're coming this together in real time to be able to share with you what this is all about. And National Child Abuse Prevention Month is all about the importance of community coming together to strengthen families and prevent child abuse and neglect. At this time, I'd like to share a video of uh, one of our Triumph Award recipients shares about the importance of a community coming together in her life and giving her a voice. When I was a year and seven months old, I entered the foster system. Total homes, foster homes, uh, group homes, respite, kinship, everything, like combined, it's 43. And I got separated from my twin brother at 11. And then when I was 13, another big event happened. So the person that I was getting adopted by got sick and wasn't able to do that. I feel like the stuff that I've been through has definitely affected me to become more positive and to be more positive about other people's circumstances. You don't know what the person sitting next to you has been through, like you have no idea. And just because they don't like share it doesn't mean that they haven't had stuff go wrong. I would want to tell kids that are in similar positions to me that they can do it and no matter what that they've gone through, like they're not defined as their past, they're defined as what they've become and what they are going to be. I'm most excited about school and finishing school and going to college. Graduating really is like a super, another big accomplishment. I want to be a pediatric psychologist, so basically a therapist for kids. I want to use my voice to help other kids find their voice and help every kid to be heard. The Triumph Awards opportunity means so much to me. When I got it, I was just really shocked and I was super happy for all the people that made the Triumph Award possible and just this opportunity in general. Um, I just wanted to thank them and just say that I'm very honored. I hope you all really enjoyed that video. Um, see, Leilani shared her story not for herself. She shared that story to be a voice for other children that are in need. And I, I'm not sure if you understand what kind of strength it takes for her to do that or for anyone to stand up there and share their story about helping others. But I hope it inspires you in the same way that it's inspired me uh, to go outside of my own comfort zone. And I want to challenge everybody that's watching here today and attending to, to think about that during National Child Abuse Prevention Month, how we go outside of our comfort zone to help others, whether that's uh, making that donation that's being matched right now for uh, emergency services for at-risk children, or just finding a location you can pick up a prevention pinwheel or dozens of prevention pinwheels and planting them out in the community to bring greater awareness. That's the sort of thing that we all need to do as we come together uh, to make a difference and, and really be there for service beyond ourselves. So it's at this time I get to speak about a lot of people that do uh, great things uh, for service beyond self. I get to talk to you about our partner youth organizations that we work with every single day to see that no child in need is forgotten in our community. To see that no child is forgotten is not the mission statement of a single organization. It requires a collaborative partnership with virtually every organization in our community that works with children and families in need. Realities for Children Charities is blessed to partner with 39 local nonprofit and government organizations dedicated to providing not only emergency services for children, but being there throughout the healing process every step of the way with the children that we are all dedicated to providing for. As the slide that's going to be coming up on your screen shows uh, and recognizes all these amazing organizations that work tirelessly for children and families in need, I want to share what this collaborative network of service is capable of accomplishing. 
This esteemed group of partner organizations that we get to work with every day are committed to collaboration. They're committed to fiscal efficiency and together providing the best possible of cont continuum of services for the children that we provide for. Last year, it was in partnership with these agencies that we were able to respond to and provide emergency funding and support for 5,618 children. Last year alone, providing emergency services to 5,618 children. If you, if you break that down, that averages out to more than 15 children every single day of the year. And together, we provided needed items to another 6,284 children when they had nowhere else to turn. This is the power of a community united in collaboration for a better tomorrow. I don't have time to share with you today about every single one of these amazing organizations, but I really want to encourage you to visit our website at realitiesforchildren.com to learn more about each of these partner youth agencies. We have a right up there. You can go into the About section and learn about their services uh, there. And if you're interested in learning more, we have a link that goes directly to uh, their website. So you can get as involved as you'd like to. I really encourage you to take the time to do that. Know who these wonderful organizations are and how you can get involved in directly working with them as well. One of those ways is right now today through Realities Rooftop Ways and working with Realities for Children. Every single penny that we raise is something that's accessible by all of our partner agencies for emergency services and programs so that together we can make, s we can make sure that no child is forgotten. So uh, the importance of community working together really can't be overstated. So if you hear that theme as we, we go through today uh, being repeated, um, I think we're seeing some of the, share, uh, the, the slides right now of our sponsors and our partners. I think that really shows how evident it is and how important it is for our community to come together to really make a difference. So as we recognize each of these business leaders on the screen, I want to I wanna encourage you to do one other thing. Take note of who these businesses are that are sponsoring this event. And the next time you do business with them or you choose to have their services, just take a moment to thank them. These are businesses that have chosen to be a part of this today, chosen to make it their business to make a difference. And I think it's important that we as a community let them know how much that means to each of us. So uh, as those screens are being shared, I want to take another moment to just speak about our month-long campaign during National Child Abuse Prevention Month to plant, get this, 10,000 blue prevention pinwheels all around northern Colorado. This is the biggest pinwheel initiative in Larimer County history, and we are going to need everybody's help to achieve that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can get your free pinwheel, uh, prevention pinwheel uh, to plant at any federal, Blue Federal Credit Union location and many of the sponsors that were listed on that screen. But for an up-to-date list of places that you can pick up these prevention pinwheels to plant, that's not as easy to say as it sounds, prevention pinwheels to plant, please visit Realities Rooftop Rays and we'll be continually updating all the locations that you can, uh, that you can go and pick up a blue pinwheel plant that in your front yard, put it on your car, put it anywhere that you can increase that uh, awareness and bring, uh, bring awareness to prevention of child abuse in our community this month. Uh, let's see here. So before we begin our Triumph Awards presentation, that is what I've been looking forward to all night. Uh, I think it's important that we take a moment to acknowledge that there is a long journey between trauma and triumph. I'd like to share with you uh, a video of Jacob's story about some of his journey as he recalls uh, a very special evening where we came together as a community to keep his dreams alive for a better tomorrow. Everyone, this is Jacob's story. What I remember most about my Keeping Dreams Alive night was the overwhelming sensation I had of being in front of a lot of people, 600 if I'm precise, and just the feeling and got of everyone being there for me specifically and to help support me. What I learned that night was, was that there was a lot more people than I expected out there to be there and care for me and support me. The dream that Realities for Children granted me that night was the trip to SeaWorld and the snake that I w was given and adopted and the surprise on it looked on everyone's face was amazing and priceless. One of the most amazing things about that night was that I was there, little old me just sitting there with the biggest smile on my face, not knowing it yet, but I was surrounded by my future family and my biggest support team that I could have ever wished for. The coolest part of everything that I had that night was when I looked at my future mom, now mom, and I somehow just knew I wanted her to be my mother. It's just unexplanatory, I just knew. What I would say to other kids out there that are struggling and walking into such a scenario as this, 
I would tell them it's okay to be scared. It's okay to be worried. But it, most importantly, it's okay to be vulnerable and try to let people in as best you can. Because you might not know it yet. You might not see it. You might not think you deserve it. But those people are there for you as your support. And they mean it or else they wouldn't be there. I just really want to give a big thanks to everybody out there tonight and I'm really happy that they can help other people and other children out there get a better future for themselves too. It's been a really good decade. I wouldn't trade it for the world to be honest. Uh, I, I think my favorite part about Jacob's story when he shares in that video at the very end he just says it's been a pretty good decade. I think that uh, when a child that's gone through what he's been through and the journey he's been on can look back and realize that there's been people there for him and has made these challenges doable, have made these challenges something that he could overcome and in looking back can call it a good decade is pretty amazing. It has been amazing for me and for all of us at Realities for Children to be part of Jacob's story throughout this healing process. In fact, he's been with our organization for over a decade. I hope you heard what he took away from the experience at the Keeping Dreams Alive program. It was learning that he was not alone. I don't want that to be missed in what he said, learning that he was not alone. And he learned that there were so many people that were there for him when he needed it most. And that meant the world to him. And that's what tonight is all about. That's what National Child Abuse Prevention Month is all about, is being there for our children when they need it most. We've spoken so far tonight about being there for emergency needs when, when the children come into the system and when there's emergency services needs. We've spoken about being there throughout the healing process. It's time to share a little bit about how we focus on breaking the cycle of abuse and being there for our youth as they emancipate from the system as we honor our 2021 Triumph Award recipients. This year is an exciting year as it marks our 20th year of the Realities for Children Triumph Awards. And not only, these, these, or, these awards not only provide collegiate scholarships, but also a connecting point for our youth and post-emancipation support for these exceptional youth in our community who have triumphed over their past personally, socially, and academically. Each Triumph Award winner has faced their challenges and hardships, but this award is not about their past. This is about us being there for them for the bright future ahead. So each of our Triumph Award uh, nominees, they're nominated by a caseworker or a representative for one of our, our partner agencies. They're then reviewed and interviewed by our Triumph Award Selection Committee as part of the awards process. At this time, I'm gonna take a moment to recognize our 2021 Triumph Award Selection Committee members. Serving this year uh, on the committee was Brad Jensen. He is the lead pastor at Faith Church. Gary McDonald, one of our business members with Ent Credit Union. Jackie Marsh, she is the mayor of Loveland. Molly Secker, the business member relations at Realities for Children. Jeff Swoboda, Fort Collins Chief of Police. Kelly DiMartino, Fort Collins Deputy City Manager. And Joyce McConnell, the president of Colorado State University. Um, on behalf of our 2021 Triumph Awards Selection Committee, I'm going to be, I, I'd like to invite our CSU President, Joyce McConnell, to share a few words about her experience on the committee and meeting with our Triumph Award recipients. But, as I mentioned, this is a live event, so uh, I think she is, uh, she's making her way up. I, as I understand it, she may have head out to the Realities for Children home base facility instead of, instead of our rooftop rays as we're meeting out here. So I know she's very excited to meet with each of our recipients and share a few words. I think, do we have Joyce right here or is she going to have a few moments before she can come up to the stage and speak? No? Okay, sounds great. Like I was saying, this is definitely a live event and we're having some fun with that. So what I'm going to get to do is well, I really do want to have um, uh, President McConnell have a moment to speak to each of our Triumph Award recipients and share her experiences on the Triumph Awards. Having her and our selection committee be a part of this is, it, it's a really big deal and a connecting point because this is something that connects them with our youth and uh, our organization and something that really is a, is a part of uh, an ongoing care that we provide for all of our Triumph Awards uh, recipients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by recognizing our 2021 Triumph Award recipients. They're going to be able to come up here uh, they're going to receive their uh, 2021 Triumph Award trophy. And, uh, and then afterwards, we'll have a moment for, uh, for President Joyce McConnell to speak and to be able to uh, 
and to be able to share uh, a photo with each of our youth as they uh, as they receive their award here at the end. So unless she's walking in right now, she is. Oh my goodness! <laughs> All right, I'm going to take that back, Joyce. You're going to uh, you're going to get your introduction here. Oh, I, I was so excited to start introducing you to all of our, our amazing recipients this year. But, folks, uh, I'm excited to share that President Joyce McConnell has arrived, and uh, she has sat on our 2021 Triumph Award Selection Committee. We get to invite her up to the stage here at the Realities Rooftop Race to share a few words about her experience and meeting our Triumph Award kids and anything that she'd like to share. Welcome. Well, thank you. You found us. I did. I went all the way to headquarters. <laughs> Hello everyone, good evening. I wanna say um, what an incredible privilege it was to be able to serve on the team that reviewed all our candidates. It is, um, I think the one word I wanna use is awe-inspiring. These students really made me feel like that there was just tremendous hope in the world and that that hope is them because they're the future. And that was so very powerful for me, not only because we got to know who they were, hear their stories, but we also got to hear their dreams. When you get to hear young people's dreams, there's nothing that is as inspiring as that. So this is a remarkable class of students. They are going to go so far. I think all of us who were on the team thought if we could see them in 20 years and hear what they've accomplished, we would be both blown away but not surprised because we knew this was the best that we could do. So I want to congratulate everyone. Higher education waits for you. Um, you're going to take it by storm, and I can't wait to see what you're going to do from this day on. Thank you. Thank you, President McConnell. I'm not going to let you go far because you're going to be presenting, uh, presenting these awards to each of our youth as they come up here. And I think I need to mask up for this as well. So give me just a moment. I think I can do that. You got your, caught your breath? <laughs> I had a lovely drive. <laughs> well, we were, just, we were just speaking about the fun of... Uh, of live events in that, you know, anything can happen. Anything so can happen. As we have our, our Realities Rooftop Raise, this our inaugural Rooftop Raise, we will this always remember that we got to watch her run straight out onto the stage here, so. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate your efforts to be here, sitting on our committee and speaking on behalf uh, for all of our amazing youth. Uh, are you ready to, uh, to present our awards? I am ready. Okay. Couldn't be more ready. Our first, uh, Triumph Award recipient, oh, we're going to get a train too, perfect, is, was nominated from Hearts and Horses, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a little bit about that nominator had to say about, about this young lady. It said, I've been honored to be a part of and witness her, to her journey towards healing. She has most definitely triumphed over her circumstances and become an amazing, uh, amazing person worthy of this recognition. Friends, please welcome Chloe Farrell as a 2021 Triumph Award recipient. Do you want to turn and get a quick photo together if we oh, can do that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Chloe. Our next recipient was nominated by Healthy Harbors. Her nominator shared. Uh, Emily is resilient, open, and caring. She has been a positive role model and exemplifies triumph in her life. Friends, please welcome 2021 Triumph Award recipient, Emily Lujan. Congratulations, Emily. Our next recipient was nominated by uh, a partner agency at the Matthews House. 
And her nominator shared, I'm continually amazed by her resiliency, positivity, and maturity. Instead of letting her past define her, she has used it as motivation for change. I believe it's time to celebrate her many triumphs. Please join me in welcoming 2021 Triumph Award recipient, Laura Woolwich. Congratulations, Alara. Our next recipient was nominated by Healthy Harbors, and her nominator shared, she has shown through the darkness with a tenacious spirit, with dignity, and to forge a better life. And I know she will continue to triumph over whatever hurdles lie ahead. Please join me in welcoming Jenna Zerung as a 2021 Triumph Award recipient. Congratulations, Jenna. I know you're all clapping at home right now, so thank you for doing that. Don't hold back just because you're watching on video. Uh, our next recipient was nominated by the Jacob Center. We'll actually be receiving uh, one of our named awards, the Lou Gator Triumph Award. And her nominator shared, she has many reasons from her past to be wary of people, but instead she has decided to devote her life to helping others in need. Her triumph is in helping others to triumph as well. Please join me in inviting Leilani Heller as a 2021 Triumph Award recipient. Congratulations, Leilani. Congratulations, Leilani. Um, so our next recipient, unfortunately, is not able to join us. This is Blanca Bacock. She was nominated by Lutheran Family Services, and she'll be receiving our Ted G. Anderson Triumph Award. But I do want to share with you what her, uh, what her nominator shared, because she is such an amazing young woman, and I'm, I'm sorry that we don't get to share with you tonight, and she can't join us. But uh, this, this, I think, speaks very closely to who she really is and how, how, what, what a wonderful young lady she is. She said, she exemplifies the spirit of triumph, in all that she does, and has demonstrated time and time again that she can and will do anything she sets her mind to. Could you give me a help? Let's give a little cheer for Blanca as well as the 2021 Triumph recipient. Thank you. Our final recipient of the 2021 Triumph Awards uh, was nominated by uh, McKinney Vento. She is actually receiving the Maddie Carbaugh Triumph Award, and her nominator shared. As I have watched her grow and heal, she beams of confidence and love. You can see it in her eyes and hear it in her voice that she has triumphed over her past and her future will be so very bright. Friends, please join me in welcoming Katana Chavez Taylor as a 2021 Triumph Award recipient on up here. Come on, Katana. Katana, I'm going to have you just stay up here for just a moment. Um, I'm going to ask everybody that is here, and uh, even though I know we can't hear that applause of those of you viewing at home, please join me one, time, one more time in honoring all of our 2021 Triumph Award recipients this year. <laughs> Woo! So on that note, and on behalf of all of our Triumph winners, Katana has agreed to share just a few words. So Katana, the mic is yours, and I think if we want to want me help. <laughs> All right. I am so honored to be here tonight and grateful to speak on behalf of all of this year's Triumph Award winners. We each have our own stories and paths that have brought us here tonight. And although each of us knows the strength it takes to move forward, there is one other thing we have all realized in our journey to triumph over our past. And that is the importance of people seeing us, hearing our voice, and caring for us when we need it most. The reason I am thankful to have the opportunity to speak tonight during National Child Abuse Prevention Month is to help be that voice for the children in need that have been silenced by abuse. No one can triumph alone. 
in this month and tonight's event encouraging people to get involved to bring awareness and offer support is more important than you can know my story was one of abuse and abandonment a world where i felt unseen and unheard nobody knew that my smile was fake and that my pain was so very real i was homeless abused and scared all i wanted was someone anyone to care for me <clears throat> and to help me to know a better tomorrow than my past. I promised myself that someday I would be that figure of hope for someone else. So tonight seems like a good time to start, and I would like to encourage everyone viewing to get involved in any way that they can. <clears throat> to make a donation to help, ooh. make a donation to help a child lost in the darkness of abuse or simply plant a prevention pinwheel to help bring awareness this month. I know we are all thankful for the support of Realities for Children and the opportunity the Triumph Award offers for our future. And although we each have our own stories, we have all chosen not to let our stories or struggles, trauma or abuse define us. In this world full of discouraging times and tragedy, we are all fortunate enough to find the beauty within any situation through guidance of one another's actions, words and understanding. On behalf of myself and all of tonight's Triumph Award recipients, I would like to say thank you all to everyone who helps to find a way to make Triumph possible. And for those children out there who still feel unheard and unseen, I, I want you all to know there are people who care for you and never let anyone steal your amazing. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Katana. That was uh, that was beautifully said. Uh, I think you really are a tremendous voice. I, I, I got a feeling tonight isn't the night that you started being a voice for others in need, but I'm thankful that you that you felt comfortable being able to come up here and share a little bit more about your story and inviting our community to come together for for those children that uh, that need people to be champions in their lives. So thank you for being one of them. And I have to say, I do love uh, your statement. She had a message that she shared tonight, and she also shared it uh, in her essay, and it says, never let anyone steal your amazing. And I think these are the challenges we look at uh, with the challenges that our, that our youth go through, that that amazing can get stolen. And I think every single one of our Triumph Award recipients tonight have made sh are, are showing their amazing in so many ways. So before our DJs introduce the next band, uh, I know our events team is taking a moment to share our event sponsors and supporters one final time on the screen this evening. I know that each and every one of these sponsors uh, are involved because they believe in the importance of being a voice just like Katana does. So in closing, I'd just like to say that kindness, gentleness, and being a voice for those who have been silenced by abuse is not always easy. However, it is always necessary. So on behalf of the business members of Realities for Children, on behalf of our amazing partner youth agencies we work with every day and the youth that we serve every day, thank you for helping us when it's not easy. So I believe before we kick off, we're going to have a, a short video from one of our business members speaking directly to this point. Afterwards, we'll get the introduction to our next band, and I just want to say thank you all for being a part of this message out into our community, encouraging everybody to get involved, being a part of, of increasing awareness of the problems of child abuse, as well as being a voice of prevention in our community. Thank you. I'm here at Santa Fe Craftsman to speak with owners Bob and Diana Criswell. We have a selection of Southwest jewelry, which we get off of the reservation, and then we've just put together a few things that kind of go along with the Southwest thing. We want to live in a nice community, and it takes effort on everybody's part to make a really great community, so it's, we wanted to be involved, and we also want our money to be used wisely. And when looking around, we saw that Realities is very efficient, and that 100% of the donated money actually goes to the cause it was donated for. We're a lot more involved in the community through Realities, which exposure, and I think the saddest thing any merchant can ever hear is, oh, I wish I'd have known you were there. So it, it gets our name out and lets people know that there is a Southwestern store here in Old Town. We think it makes the community a better place to live. 